And I wanted to talk about my own personal experience and how did we witness this war and why it was really moments where my government, the government of Bahrain, have decided to join the Saudi Arabia to launch its war against Yemen. The scene were catastrophic. Everyone seen the sort of civilian loss, the devastation. And it was also an important message was sent to the public, the, to, the, to the Bahraini people. Whoever dare to speak against the war will be faced with consequences. No one is there. Is whoever going to exercise this right, these consequences would mean that you could end up in a prison. One of my dear friends, his name is Nabir Rajab. He is a leading human rights defender and very, very a brave man. He thought those bombs which were dropped on the children of Yemen were dropped under our name. It's our government who is responsible for those crimes. And we cannot, it's not an option for us just to stay there and be silent. He decided to tweet pictures of what it means to see hospitals being bombed, to see civilians being murdered, just to show the photos. And one of his tweets to say, wars bring misery. For those series of tweets, my friend Nabil was arrested. And at that time, he was facing 15 years imprisonment simply because he dared to exercise this right. And I really will remember this moment in 2017. Precisely, July 2017, there were two court hearings. One of them was here in London at the High Court and the second court was in Bahrain. One of them was about whether the UK arms sales to Saudi Arabia is lawful and it was a day where a judge will deliver the verdict. At the same time, my friend Nabil was facing a court there in Bahrain after spending over a year in a prison. A lot of it was in solitary confinement. That day, both outcomes did not really come to what I would wish to see. A British judge ruled that the UK arms sales to Saudi Arabia were lawful, sending a devastating message to the people in Yemen that the bombs, which some of them are made in Britain, are fine. This was the message which was sent by the court. And then when you see this message, you would think, what sort of a hope to those people which were really having so much, like so much to lose, and then to see everyone is against them. We probably were feeling a sense of disappointment because we saw the court has ruled that this was lawful. But how about those which are some of them I mean, some of those pictures to see a mother trying to feed her son or her child, unable to do this, is because of part of this war was also about starvation. And that day, my friend Nabil Rajab was also convicted to two years. I stand and I pause for a second. Do we have a right to say we should be disappointed and as a, reflect, as a reflection of this, do nothing? Or is it this is, should give us more reason to fight back, to stand up, and to do whatever it takes in order to cause this change? I'm glad after two years that ruling by the High Court was overturned by the very same court. And that was for the first time, was giving the true hope to the people of Yemen that the British government for once was unable to patch their arms to kill civilians there. And this was a moment which all of us should be proud of. In particular, the campaigns against arms trade who stood up and did not give up and challenged and took that legal challenge. And my friend Nabil Rajab is now 
out of a prison and he is able to be reunited with his family. But there is also a moment of a proud is how much it costs when we say hands off Yemen, what it means to some of us. Thank you so much for listening.